So, so those specific requirements that you've listed there uh, would be the ones that uh, would be included in our construction plan for the suburban campus that we will be working with GSA on kind of going forward. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. General Lady yields the chairman now recognizes the the uh, chairman of the aviation subcommittee, Mr. Graves from Louisiana. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I want to thank both of you for for being here. I want to thank you for your testimony, uh, Mr. Dooms. I I understand how um, you you may be be shocked that folks are are questioning criteria and criteria being changed, but I I do want to just give you a little bit of perspective on the things that we deal with. In this committee, um, you can imagine billions and billions of dollars in, for example, transportation grants have been given to the Department of Transportation. Um, and, and as we've gone through and looked at the allocation of dollars and we've looked at the criteria that this Department of Transportation has developed, we've watched as 17% of the overall money has been given to the state of California while 0.33% of the money has been awarded to the state of Alabama. Uh, those states, you can say, well, maybe it's population. Those states have an eight-fold difference in population, uh, yet that is a 51-fold um, uh, difference in the amount of allocation among states. So said another way, I have observed how criteria has been manipulated in a way to benefit specific states, areas, or projects that I think otherwise do not stand on their own merit. So. I want you to understand that backdrop under which you're showing up here. Um, so in that regard, it, it is my understanding that criteria was changed, and you've noted the scoring issue that the chairman the chairman noted. Was were, were you asked, was anyone, did anyone come to you and ask you to change that criteria, or are you aware of anyone from above, from White House, political uh, appointees, or any others that asked that that criteria be changed? or that the weighted of the scoring be changed? Uh, thank you for that question, Congressman. Uh, what happened was in December of 2022, uh, Cong Congress directed GSA and the FBI to conduct consult consultations, meaningful con consultations with the state of Maryland and Virginia. We held those consultations in March of 2023. And then uh, we worked collaboratively with our partners over at the FBI uh, to come up with new criteria. And the changes we made in the criteria, I think it's really important to talk about that. One was we decided to increase uh, the percentage of cost. Uh, we thought it was uh, really desirable to increase our focus on providing the lowest cost uh, option for taxpayers. And then we had gov government-wide directives related to equity that we felt like we needed to reflect. And I, I will point out that mission remains the number one priority in the new, new set of criteria. But we worked on that collaboratively with our partners with the FBI, and they wrote and they let us know okay. that they appreciate it. Okay, and 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 I appreciate that that dialogue and engagement, and I and I certainly respect that and think it's important. But just going back to my question, did did was there a political appointee, White House, or anyone that that asked you or asked anyone within GSA to actually change the criteria or change the weight of the criteria. So putting aside state engagement and all those, was there anyone along those lines? Uh, so let me clarify. We had both political appointees and career officials within GSA yep. meeting with career officials yep. with the FBI to come up with this new criteria. Yep. So no one outside of the agency, sir. Right. So it is, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to surmise here. So it is fair to say that there were political appointees that weighed in on this and asked that the criteria be changed or that the weight of the, weight of the scoring be changed. Yes, there were political appointees that were a part of that process, Congressman. Th thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm not sure which one of you to ask this question to, but um, I certainly understand the accessibility of the site as being really important. You want employees to be able to, to actually get to work. Um, and I understand that the site that you chose uh, rank the highest in terms of transit accessibility, but then you also have the requirement, at least in the previous scope, to provide thousands of parking spots. And I just want to make sure I understand that situation and uh, happy to take a answer from either of you. Sure. So for our workforce, uh, we were definitely advocating strongly to ensure max level of access to mass transportation. Uh, 
uh, metro rail, regional rail, bus lines, uh, as well as accessibility to uh, uh, kind of sites in, in the region. Um, in addition to that, certainly there is going to come a time as we work through the program of requirements in more detail uh, leading up to the prospectus where we will be having significant discussions about the level of parking uh, that would be included on the site. Something like that about the amount of parking, those details will be kind of more heavily discussed towards the, the next stage of the and, and uh, Director Demos, thank you, I'm out of time. Mr. Mr. Chairman, I just wanna say, um, it would be very helpful if y'all could help us understand the relationship between how you scored the transit, parking, and then also if you looked at actually making investments in new infrastructure to improve the so score for either one of those sites. Yield back. Chair, thanks the gentleman. The chair now recognizes the ranking member of the full committee, Mr. Larson. Thank you, Mr. Dooms. Uh, I don't think anyone's arguing that the SSA has the legal authority 